Today, gamers are being forced to update their motherboard. Here's how AMD could fix the memory crisis. Zen 8 and Zen 9 leak and Ryzen 10,000 is officially a massive change. Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. This video is sponsored by Hollyland. First up for today, some of you will have to update your BIOS if you want to game. That's right, I know this sounds weird, but there's been a flaw found in multiple boards. I'm talking ones made by Zeus, Gigabyte, ASRock, and MSI, so most of the major board manufacturers out there. And essentially, what's happened is that Riot Games, the makers of Valorant and League of Legends, discovered that the input-output memory management unit, which essentially protects memory from DMA attacks, isn't fully initialized at boot. Basically, DMA, or Direct Memory Access, is hardware that you plug into a PCI Express slot to bypass the CPU and directly read and write to memory. Think of a GPU. This is completely normal, but the input-output memory management unit's job is to check the ID of any device trying to access memory this way, because you can use it for nefarious reasons. The problem is that if it isn't fully initialized, it can't do its job, meaning cheaters could make a DMA device to cheat in games. And because of that, Riot Games is now putting a restriction on Valorant for any computer that's affected by this bug, so you won't be able to play the game. Luckily, Riot Games has been working with motherboard manufacturers who have since released BIOS updates to fix the issue. Now, I personally think that this is a little overblown as of now. It doesn't seem like they actually caught anyone doing this to cheat, but at the same time, I believe it's mostly undetectable. And according to them, it would essentially break all DMs DMA detection used in the market. So this affects a lot of games. And I do know plenty of people would be willing to buy something to cheat. So I can at least somewhat understand Riot doing this. As soon as you have a ton of cheaters in a game, it definitely takes the fun out of it. As of now, it seems like it's just Riot Games implementing this, though other companies could easily follow suit. Either way, if you're affected by it and you still want to play the game, you'll have to update your BIOS. So this is a brand new webcam by this company called Hollyland. As you can see, it not only looks awesome, but it actually comes with a wireless mic that's made to transmit right to the camera, so you can get some incredible audio from it. It's called the Lyra 4K Vision with Ultra Voice, and as you can see, it looks amazing. With its 1 over 1.5 inch CMOS sensor, this bad boy captures a ton of lights for a gorgeous image with up to 4K 30fps. And thanks to the addition of the Lark A1 wireless mic, you can quickly clip this anywhere using the magnet for crystal clear audio, including intelligent noise cancellation, so it can reduce the noise by up to 25 decibels. And you don't need a receiver or anything like that because it's all built into the webcam. But that's just the beginning, because this bad boy also includes awesome AI features like AI tracking and auto smart framing, so we can keep you in the middle of the frame at all times. It also intelligently tunes the color and exposure in real time based on your lighting conditions. It even has a built-in shutter to block the webcam for privacy. So whether you want to stream or up your video call quality, heck, even just use it as a regular video camera, the Lyra 4K Vision with Ultra voice is the ultimate webcam for you. To check it out yourself, click my link in the description below. And next up for today, here's a plan that AMD could take to help fix this memory crisis, because things are getting really bad. I'm talking according to Circana's retail tracking service, which tracks real-world sales and consumer purchase behavior, US gaming hardware sales have reached an unbelievable 35-year low, meaning memory prices are having a huge effect on PC gamers right now. In fact, it's so bad that AMD's 5800X3D is selling for over $700 right now, meaning almost double that of the 9800X3D. Now, that may sound crazy, but it's because the 5800X3D still uses the AM4 platform, and therefore DDR4. When we look at DDR4 prices though, things are starting to get pretty expensive there as well. Don't get me wrong, you can find better prices on DDR4 than DDR5, but it's still not great. The real reason I think gamers are jumping to the 5800X3D is because they have an 
AM4 board already and enough DDR4 memory, but they just want to upgrade their CPU instead of being forced to buy new DDR5. So because of that, some in the industry are calling on AMD to start manufacturing more 5800X3D chips. And I'll be honest, I don't really see that happening. Reports claim that AMD quit making that chip last year, so I really don't see them doing something like that. Instead, I think they should bring back the 5700X30. Not because it's better or anything, but it's a more realistic request because reports point to AMD ending production in just August of this year, and it's also quickly going up in price. Now, the 5700X30 isn't amazing or anything, but it's still a decent gaming CPU. And for any Anyone needing something to hold them over until things die down, it could be perfect. So yeah, AMD? And next up, we have a pretty wild one. So as many of you know, we've seen leaks for Zen 6 and even for Zen 7. But Moore's Law is Dead has actually begun sharing info about not only Zen 8, but even Zen 9. Think Ryzen 12,000 and 13,000, or Ryzen AI Max Plus Extreme 700, whatever they call it. Either way, we're talking about chips potentially releasing as late as 2030. So very far away. And because of that, we only have the code names right now. Specifically, for Zen 8, he claims that it's codenamed Penelope. And for Zen 9, it's Nemesis. And the abbreviations are PL for Penelope and NM for Nemesis. Obviously, as of now, there isn't much more known about these, but it's interesting to see that AMD is still planning to use the Zen name so far into the future. It'll be exciting to see these as we get more information. And lastly for today, AMD just revealed some massive changes coming to Ryzen 10,000 CPUs, as well as confirmation that these bad boys are moving along very nicely. So we have a couple different stories here, starting with AMD adding compiler support for Zen 6 to GCC 16 for its launch. And we know it's Zen 6 because of this right here. And of course, Zen 6 is set to be the architecture in Ryzen 10,000 CPUs, or if they do really go down this Ryzen AI route, whatever they call them there. Now, the first thing this tells us is that AMD is moving along nicely for a release sometime next year. Until Zen 5, AMD wouldn't add their compiler support until after the actual release. So this is definitely a big step up and shows us just how far along they are. When it comes to the update itself, AMD added new ISA capabilities like full FP16 support in ABX512, new bit matrix multiply instructions, and more. Basically, this is likely what AMD meant when they mentioned new AI data type support on their new roadmap. Of course, for the most part, these are hints at AI updates, not for gaming or anything, but that's where the next story comes in. Because AMD just released the performance monitor counters document for Zen 6 as well. Basically, these are built in CPU counters that let software measure what's happening in the core. And it's here where things get interesting. Because while also adding monitor support for FP16, which means that AMD is taking it way more seriously and exposing it so developers can measure it, tune it, etc. But they also point to changes around the integer scheduler. Instead of one big unified scheduler, AMD is splitting it into six separate schedulers. And this could actually be used to push frequencies higher. Because if you take one one big scheduler and divide it into six smaller ones, it can help it get higher clocks because it shortens paths, reduces power density. It's a really interesting change. And what's wild is that leaks have claimed an unreal 7 gigahertz for next gen Ryzen. So this actually makes that a bit more believable. And even if that's not why this change is here, maybe it has to do with power or whatever. Regardless, this proves that AMD is making some huge architectural changes to their upcoming chips, meaning that we are seriously looking at a huge potential for big performance gains. And that doesn't even include things like the big jump in core count. Don't forget that Zen 6 is expected to come with up to 24 cores, with even the lowest end Ryzen 5 moving up to 8 cores. So yeah, this is going to be huge. 